Hello and welcome to my new video. In this video, we are going to talk about VS Code and how we can connect it to the remote SSH environment, or it's better to say a better machine with higher CPUs, higher RAM, and actually have a very great performance boost in the uh, performance of our work and in our productivity. Just before we continue, firstly, I hope you have your coffee mug ready with you because this one is going to be a hands-on project or a video. And then next, I have launched two projects. One of them is my own weblog, that is someone.blog. In there, I'm going to talk about the projects that I'm starting and general rants about like the kind of marketplace. That's the first one. The second one that is I'm very excited about is releasechannel.com. That's uh, most useful, I think, for developers and for SRE and DevOps people. In there, you are going to uh, find out about the latest releases of different software. So these two projects are my latest ones. I'm going to leverage the Cloudflare infrastructure in there, and which helps me to have pretty fast websites. I think next video, I'm going to have a good course on it. It's not just a small video. It's going to be a whole course on how to leverage your uh, the Cloudflare pages uh, to uh, inside your Jamstack projects. So all of those ones away, uh, let's focus on this uh, video that is VS Code and how we can leverage VS Code and remote SSH to have better productivity in our programming and basically day-to-day -day life of an engineer, software engineer or DevOps engineer. Okay, let's go. So in this video, we are going to use Google Cloud infrastructure, uh, almost like always, although they're expensive. Yeah. So this is the general architecture that we are going to have. We are going to have VS Code, and we are going to use a plugin, uh, VS Code's Remote SSH, and we are going to connect to a, a cloud machine or a compute machine that has eight cores of CPU and 32 gigabytes of RAM, Pretty good machine with 30 gigabytes of uh, SSD. This machine usually costs about like 40 cents per hour, but basically we are not going to use all that money. Uh, like not always because it's just probably eight to 10 hours of working with the machine. So that's just about $4 per day. Also, you can leverage the free, uh, free quota and free trial of GCP with $300. Uh, free quota, that's a pretty generous amount for three months. You can renew your quota basically just with using other people's credit card and creating new accounts for yourself. So father, mother, anybody's credit card, just put it in and renew your free subscription. Although I will not uh, endorse that one. It's not a very good idea. It's better to buy it. But anyway, not everybody can afford it. Sorry for that, Google. And yes, so let's go to the next one about the steps. First of all, we are going to create a GCP compute instance. Pretty easy, I would say, but there are some tricks in there and like how to create your SSH key to make sure that your machine is completely secure. And uh, next we are going to talk about basically SSH key and then testing our connection to the instance using the terminal. And then we are going to connect with VS Code, do some kind of like diagnosis, if there is any, especially in Windows machines there is. And part six is about enjoying the performance. Let's go and do it. Oh, by the way, before we start, let's go to this one and just talk about the benefits of it. So, you know, it just, your machine currently, it, it runs on like two cores probably, or even like four cores or six cores. Still, you're far away from being like eight cores. If you're having like an eight core machine, so basically you're well off, you don't need this. But there is also another reason that you can, uh, or it's better to say you should have all your projects from now on on cloud and that is better security. Imagine that currently you have all the code inside your system and that's not something that we prefer. The reason behind that is maybe like there's a robbery and somebody like stole your computer. 
I know there is like encryption in there, but can we can have some extra layer of security and that is actually we don't have anything at all on our system. So when they seal it, there is nothing in there. So that's the second one. So performance, first of all, secondly, security. Okay, let's go for it. Okay, uh, here is my GCP dashboard. It is console that cloud.google.com you can find this link also in the description uh, you will have some kind of free trial you can see here for me it's like 362 uh, dollars remaining and for creating a new compute uh, engine you, you can go in here you can go in VM instances this is something that I use and uh, work with so let's create a new one YouTube video instance Uh, I would rather use compute optimized one basically we want to gain uh, performance also you can use the GPU instances if you're using uh, some kind of AI development or memory optimized the same I'd like to use the compute optimized ones and pretty much prefer this one 8 CPUs and 32 gigabytes of memory going to the next one for sure, I prefer Ubuntu. And if you know me, I love the latest versions. And here, to have the maximum benefit of the speed, we'll have 30, gig 30 gigabytes of SSD instance. And then we don't want confidential computing, although you can have it. Uh, Deploy the compute, uh, a container image. You can have that option actually. You can create your own container uh, with the tools that you want, or even like you can have some kind of, let's say, uh, you can create one Node.js container and work from there. Probably if you're working in a company, you have some kind of uh, dev containers in there. The next one is API access. Default is okay in here. HTTP and HTTPS. Especially if you're uh, having some kind of uh, developing some kind of web service, it will help a lot. Let's go to the next one, the management. One thing that uh, we should fill out is here. So I would usually turn off this one, although it's a good thing to have. Uh, I don't see a need for it for now. Let's create an SSH in here. So. Okay, here it is. This is where we are going to create an SSH. Basically, you don't need to do it in here. The reason behind that is currently I'm using terminal. And inside Windows terminal, I have actually Ubuntu terminal you can see in here. So if you're using or creating your SSH key inside Ubuntu terminal or inside like homepage of Ubuntu terminal, it's not accessible by Windows. So that's a caveat just you don't want to have something like that so let's go to documents and create the key so the name can be YouTube video dash sample um, dash C username I can leverage my own username Basically, you should have the username of your system or like your cloud username here. Here's my cloud username. Email works, username works. Just, you can put it there. Uh, passphrase, it's something that it's good to have. I will just uh, skip it for now. So we have it. ls dash al and the name is YouTube. You see it's created in here and maybe it's better I do something like this okay you can see two of them are created one of them is this one the other one is this one what we want to do is to just kind of like copy what is inside the public key inside here what it means is it tells the system 
to use this public key uh, or public SSH key, or it's like a certi certificate, not, not, not just a key. So you are telling the system to kind of encrypt all the connections using this public key. And for somebody that doesn't have the private key, uh, he cannot decode this connection. So basically your connection is fully secured. Now I'm going to just vim youtube.pub. One another thing is that we need to change the access to the system. Currently it's too, uh, too available to other people. We don't want to have it. Especially the systems are picky about it if you are in the Linux. In the Windows side, they are more relaxed. So we have copied it. It has kind of like uh, found my username. And we are ready to go. Just final checks. 8 CPUs, 32 uh, gigabytes of memory. And your place, you can be pretty flexible about it. I'm US Central for now. And yep, let's create it. Oh, it says permission this one for the public one or is too open. Let's check what it is. This is one of the issues that you'll face when you're working with the Windows based infrastructure. Just let's copy them over. CP to that one. To here. Okay. And then let's do the search mode again. Okay. And okay, man. LS. Yep. I just forgot the AL one. Here it is. That's what we need. You can see in here. We couldn't set it to this one because we were like kind of sharing the file system with Windows. Uh, that's a big issue in there. We need to have a better way of doing it. So with Linux, it's more secure. Now let's go and connect to the system. Finally, let's do it. And invalid format. Yes, we are in. So it doesn't need the public key. It needs the private key. And basically you are telling your SSH that you need the private key. And now that we have connected and we are sure that this is the way to connect to it, we are just going to copy it. There is one other thing that I would do and that is going to PowerShell, going to CD documents and yes. we want to use this, this format to connect to the system. And let's copy over the command file. Let's connect the VS code. Using F1, you can bring out this action menu and here you can see remote SSH is in the first, uh, commands that I've recently used. If you want to find it, it just, you can find it in the extensions. It's remote dash SSH. Here it is. You can just install it and enjoy the benefits. Just go and now going to use FN, F1 in, on my keyboard or F1 in your keyboard. If you can access F1 uh, kind of like directly, let's add a new SSH host. This one says, what is your command to connect to that host? This is the part that we are not actually using like this because the addressing is not according to windows. We need to have the addressing according to the windows. And that is basically in my documents in a pretty unsecure way. And that should work. And it says where I should store your configuration. You say it here. And then you say open the config. One of the things that you can see after you have added it, it doesn't have these slashes. So I think that's a bug, but you can easily add it like this one. And now 
you should be able to work with it. So again, like going in and kind of connecting to a host. So the current host is, uh, I think it's this one, 84. So let's connect to the 84 one and we're telling it that it is a Linux machine. And then it says that should I accept whatever fingerprint he's sending to me? Of course. And voila, you have it now. Let's close this window. We don't need it anymore. Okay, we are connected to the system. You have access to this YouTube sample video machine. And basically, this is how you can connect from now on to your system and control it. So we don't have anything in our main directory. Let's go in and copy over one. Uh, one GitHub open source project that I have actually in my account. And that is the release channel. It's fully open source. You can come in and basically either help me or give me some comments. And we need to just copy it. Let's go and say git clone. Now let's go to the site. I just want to show you how you can run some kind of like a UI project. We're going to install what's in there. All is good. No. Okay, so you can see here we have this button that is like about opening in the browser. And you have it in here in your local. So you can see it says that it's localhost. VS Code has a great feature for doing port forwards for you. It says that what port on the system and where it's going to be forwarded to. Here you can see it's localhost 8080. So it's pretty seamless kind of experience for developing your code. You can even uh, open your code in here and you have it in here. So pretty, uh, pretty easy. You can work with it as if it's like in your current system, you can copy files over just by drag and drop and work with it basically. And that's an amazing feature. Uh, I never thought I'm going to have pretty easy to work with and pretty secure. So, Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, next video is going to be about Cloudflare. It's going to be a very short course, a uh, mini course, maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes. But you learn about like uh, Jamstack, you learn about how you can deploy on the fastest uh, kind of hosting platform in the world. And before that, maybe you can check my releasechannel.com website and you can see how fast it is. It's currently on Cloudflare pages. So if you want to learn the trick, be my guest on next video. Thank you.